अफगानिस्तान have afghan interim authorities direct financial arm ammunition shelter and training support in association with al qaeda ttp in support of kabul and al qaeda by using afghan soil intensifies its, its attacks on pakistan now the situation is that ttp daesh combined threat is growing some ttp members have direct links with daesh but other ttp members in association with afghan taliban pushing daesh into the neighboring countries including pakistan that's another threat to the region for which neighboring countries have to get united against the threat of terrorism to discuss this very important and grave issue which is at the regional level we have in our studios dr shafkat munir he is the security analyst most welcome to you dr shafka sir thank, thank you, you very much and uh, with him abdullah khan he is the conflict security analyst and managing director pakistan institute of conflict and security <coughs> studies pics most welcome you to you sir thank you very much for your presence here and uh, online at uh, phone uh, joining us uh, brigadier retired ghazanfar ali shah he is uh, the senior defense analyst and uh, uh, my first question is to you brigadier sir uh, uh, how do you see sir the rising number of uh, this uh, band ttp terrorists in afghanistan as a un report termed their uh, estimated strength as 6000 to 6500 fighters operating from afghan soil and often use uh, 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 to target inside pakistan so how do you see their presence and growing presence over there in afghanistan uh, thank you very much sir Actually, uh, if we keep the report in view, and along with the report, if you see the practical operations which have been, which are being uh, the uh, suicide assaults and the assaults on pa in Pakistan on terror, like the terrorist activities in Pakistan, which are happening, so the report and the practical situation uh, corroborates itself, and it it authenticates the report which has been issued by the UN. Now you see, the day before yesterday, there was a attack on Banu uh, Cantonment, and there, there were seven terrorists killed. Out of seven terrorists, six terrorists, six terrorists were Afghan, and um, uh, naturally from where they had come. Today, yesterday, government of Pakistan called the Afghan ambassador, Afghan uh, Charity Affairs, and they uh, proved or they presented report to them that uh, the Gul Bahadur uh, TTP, uh, I would like to call him a half is. Gul Bahadur is a terrorist, and he is residing in uh, Afghanistan. He has got very, very uh, intimate link with the uh, Afghani network. So they are undertaking terrorist activities in Pakistan. So whatever UN report has mentioned, and this is not the first report. If you go into the background, there are number of reports which have been issued before that, and there are yeah, number of statements, definitely, statements even which have been even been issued by the American uh, uh, spokesperson, and they said. And uh, I mean, I think a month back they cautioned Afghanistan. They told them also, and they accepted. Americans accepted through their in report that whatever terrorist activities are taking Pakistan are being uh, orchestrated, are being initiated, are being financed, are being organized uh, through with the help of the Afghan government. Because uh, uh, yesterday, yesterday U.S. State Department <coughs> spokesperson also cautioned Afghan Taliban. in terror authority uh, to not to allow uh, any sort of a terrorist organization to use their soil to uh, attack any neighboring country so uh, they have already cautioned but uh, this un report actually endorses pakistan's concern that uh, afghan interim authority unwilling to take any decisive action against ttp to refrain uh, them from using the their uh, their soil and attacking pakistan which has been intensified since last couple of years Yes, you are absolutely right. Pakistan has been repeatedly saying that the Afghan, uh, the Afghan soil is being used, in spite of the fact, in spite of the promise which was made by the Afghan, Afghanistan, Afghan Taliban government that Afghan soil would not be 
to initiate terrorist activities in other in any neighboring country. But this is happening, and repeatedly Pakistan has uh, presented proof of those uh, terrorist attacks and those terrorists, terrorists who were belonging to Afghanistan that they are taking the suicide attack. I mean, we are only talking of the terrorism activities. The number of the Afghans which are involved in the organized jihadis, in the organized ransom, it is they, those things are not reported. And those, these, those are the people who are illegally residing in Pakistan. So Pakistan's stance is, uh, though Pakistan presents this stance, but it is not being validated by the uh, uh, people who can take some action uh, to caution Afghanistan not to take terrorist activities in Pakistan. What to say of, uh, of the terrorist activities being taken in Pakistan and being orchestrated by the Afghan government or through their help? There are, there are a number of reports that the, the, the weapons and the, uh, and the uh, ammunition which Americans left in Afghanistan that was taken over by the Afghan Taliban Exactly, exactly. Uh, Brigadier Tad, uh, Brigadier Tad Ghazan for sir, uh, this UN report actually brought out the TTP enjoying great operational freedom in Afghanistan, keeping... Uh, 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 not only that, but also the freedom of movement, keeping arms, ammunition, different weapons, uh, having official weapon permits as well by the Afghan interim authority, living in state guest houses. In some cases, TTP has the official status. So how do you respond to this one? Because it seems that uh, uh, the, these TTP elements uh, are actually... Uh, the second tier of uh, Afghan Kabul interim authority. It's not the TTP only. It's the, it's the uh, groups which are operating in Pakistan. Where is the BLA? BLA commander. Where is uh, Harviyar Mari living? Where is Bradad Bukti living? Where is uh, uh, I mean Nangal living? All all these groups and their leaders enjoy the patronage of uh, Afghan interim government. And before that, even if you go into the ST and see the uh, government of the Karzai government, Baramdad Bukhti was issued passport by the Afghan government and even facilitated to go to Switzerland and England where, they, where you know, where at, uh, sometimes they painted some pictures on the back row of the uh, buses flying onto the uh, London road or the Swiss road. Pakistan took up that case also. So all these groups enjoy not only the patronage, but I'm telling you, they enjoy great financial support. Because on one, one side, the Americans are saying that the Afghan soil should not be used. On the other hand, Afghan illegally, uh, covertly, American government is providing uh, uh, dollars to Afghan government to sustain or to undertake uh, uh, their normal activities. There's a nexus. There's a very clear nexus. I can tell you that there are camps of uh, uh, the CTP which are existing in mazar sharif which are existing in uh, Pulcharkhi, near Kabul, which are existing in Nuristan. Where were so all those people who ran away from Afghanistan, from Pakistan, and they were represented by the uh, by the American government? They were, once the Afghan interim government or the Afghan government, Taliban government took over, they released all those prisoners, which were which who were involved in grave terrorist activities in Pakistan. Now you see, there, there has to be a thesis in uh, the, the attack taking place in in um, in uh, Banu right on the day of Ashura or day before Ashura or uh, Muslims being killed, and Muslims are being used. So all those pieces of religion, all these pieces of morality, all these of those, the pictures they paint of their, themselves of being Muslim, all that is being negated and being, it is being mutilated by the Afghan leadership. They have, they have, they have spoiled the image of Muslim in the uh, international world. One, once in more. You see, there are a number of things which are involved with this terrorism. It's not only the terrorism. It is the... Uh, it is, it is, sir, definitely, uh, your, your apprehensions has the weight as uh, the report tells us that uh, uh, there is uh, uh, a clear uh, uh, expansion is seen, in, uh, particularly in Daesh ranks, as they uh, grow massively uh, from around 4,000 to nearly 6,000 uh, lethal fighters and some factions are trying hard to have alliance with TTP and uh, uh, rest of the terrorist organizations existing within Afghanistan uh, who have taken refuge over there. So why Afghan interim authority is taking light? Because Afghanistan is also suffering from uh, terrorism, particularly from Daesh. Russell, if you see the acts of uh, incidents of terrorism in Afghanistan, they have, they have, uh, uh, those incidents have reduced considerably. 
there are isolated attacks which is being taken by in some mosque and all that. But the number of the incidents you take in Pakistan, which is a which is hard luck of Pakistan, which is uh, which is very annoying, which is very disturbing, which is very perturbing, they have in, they have those in, those incidents have increased. I mean, uh, the reports of the Pakistan conflict, the security and conflict, the CRS says that those in those uh, in, and they, when it analyzes it for provincial wise. So on this analysis, Balochistan and uh, Punjab, uh, the KPK and Punjab, they, they have been 83% uh, increase in the terrorist activities in Pakistan. And those all those activities, previously, they even used to target the civil installation, but the, the activities, the terrorism acts which are being done uh, nowadays are uh, mainly focused against the Pakistan army. Because who is against the Pakistan army? We have to take, take that, risk, that perception in view. India is against the Pakistan army and Pakistan intelligence. So they have been always maligning Pakistan army and Pakistan intelligence agencies into uh, into their own uh, network. As the second is the Afghan government, uh, or the second is the Taliban, the Haqqani network or Taliban network, Taliban, the, the Taliban which belong to Pakistan. You say Punjabi Taliban or the Taliban uh, in uh, Masood Taliban and all those people. They have been provided massive money. Why? How, how was Tariqa Taliban raised? You have to go into that uh, history also. It was raised with the assistance of CIA. It was raised with the assistance of RAW. RAW, Mossad, and CIA had an access. They provided all the initially, I'm telling you, of, uh, in, in the Asia way back. They provided the uh, network. They provided so the. You, uh, uh, sir, you, are talking about, uh, you are talking about having financial assistance and all resources from the different. Uh, 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 different uh, organizations, entities, and different ways. So, what about uh, to have check on social media, particularly latest technologies like artificial intelligence and all others, because they are using right now these technologies for their nefarious designs, uh, which terrorist organizations are now uh, utilizing to attract funding, like donations, recruiting young people, including women, uh, sending messages, executing attacks, and also to have criminal activities uh, like kidnapping paying for ransom, bank uh, robberies, and all other things. So uh, these are also in their ambit. They are uh, getting money from the same uh, uh, country or the same society and then utilizing it to destroy that society and the culture and the social fabric. Yes, I pointed out to you that we are we do talk of terrorism, but Afghan, Afghan, Afghans who are involved in, in, in illegal activities, like you pointed out, the robberies, not the bank robberies, but robberies that... Uh, uh, the residential houses. I had a robbery at my house in Islamabad. And when the uh, police traced out, those two people, uh, Rais and uh, one, one name was Rais, and another, they, uh, they, they happened to be of one national. And the police could not arrest them because they had ran away. And they were run, they were uh, uh, they were having latest cars. They were uh, uh, they were uh, uh, I mean, using the latest technology. So all these things that you pointed out are happening. That's what I'm saying. That Afghan, Afghan, illegal Afghans or those Afghans who have been in Pakistan, it, uh, there, 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 there's a there's a, uh, a flesh, uh, there's a tra trip to that also. That those Afghans who are in Pakistan, they have now happened to be they have been issued the passport, they have been issued with, issued with the ID card, they are doing business also and all those things. But uh, on one side, they are registered Afghans, but they are illegal Afghans. So Pakistan has been pointing out this thing. One is the people residing in Pakistan. Second thing is if you do go to the Dasu attack, the intelligence report after the Dasu attack where the Chinese were killed uh, amply indicated that the vehicle which was made, it came, it came uh, to Chakral from Afghanistan. And all that way it traveled to Pakistan and that was the second attack which was taken by the Chinese engineers. And Chinese are, uh, are helping Afghanistan in a bigger way by undertaking development of Afghanistan activities in Afghanistan. Now, Chinese Afghans want to spoil the relation between Chinese and Pakistan on whose behalf. There is some agency behind it, which is telling them to do it. So they are doing it. Otherwise, uh, why should Chinese be targeted? If you are targeting Pakistan army and not targeting the civilians in Pakistan, why, should, why are you targeting Chinese? These are the things which raise questions in your mind. So Pakistan had to respond to these uh, uh, questions. Pakistan has to respond, respond, respond to these questions. Uh, 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 such existing, but some or the other, uh, we have to the operations we have to undertake have to be Afghan specific. I would say illegal Afghan residing in Pakistan. How did the vehicle which happened the which uh, struck the Banu uh, supply point? How did it come to uh, Banu? 
they do have number of cattle. So if you if you just shortly tell us about that, what uh, actually this is basically a regional threat to all countries, not only to Pakistan. Pakistan is the most sufferer right now. Uh, but what should be done at the regional level? As we have uh, listened to very few voices, except Iran, uh, we haven't seen anything from China or from uh, Russia or Central Asian republics because this threat is actually growing. And Russia has also already witnessed a Daesh attack in Moscow as well. So how how do you see that? Because uh, uh, this threat is regional, so we require a regional approach. We do require a regional approach. But if you want a point-blank answer, I have no hesitation in saying that no regional will approach will be adopted against the terrorist activities which are being taken in Pakistan. Because Pakistan, the damage to Pakistan, the loss of life to Pakistan, does not concern any regional player. It doesn't concern India, India. it doesn't concern, concern Iran, it doesn't concern Afghanistan, it does not concern even Americans, I would say. Had, it, uh, had there been a concern, there would have been a uh, Pakistan-American-Chinese approach ad adopted towards this. So Pakistan has to take, make its own house in order and take a very proactive approach. If you see the region, I'm telling you, you can, yeah, I mean, it's not today. It's for the last, uh, uh, I would say, two years, these activities have been increased considerably. But have you seen any approach? Have you seen any action? Have you seen, other than the uh, mincing of the word, nothing has been done to stop, to tell Afghan government. There are a number of things which can happen. There can, uh, if you impose sanction on Pakistan. Definitely. Brigadier Sir, you are absolutely right. Thank you very much uh, for your time online. Brigadier Retired Ghazanfar Ali Shah was with us and uh, he was telling, elaborating each and every aspect of what actually Pakistan is confronting because of the use of Afghan soil by the terrorists and uh, especially in the light of UN report. Uh, so, uh, uh, Dr. Shafkat, uh, uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, this report particularly and the behavior of Afghan Taliban, do you not think that uh, uh, Afghan Taliban has some kind of a thought that others are blind, deaf or mindless and they, uh, 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 what they say, what Kabul says is more correct uh, as they keep on denying publicly about the presence of any terrorist group, involvement of uh, the TTP uh, in terrorism against Pakistan or uh, that they have uh, ever used the Afghan soil. So if such a scenario is there, why TTP leadership is so uh, innocent and then uh, uh, why Kabul is reluctant to hand them over to Pakistan because Pakistan time and again stresses upon Kabul authority that they must have to hand over the leadership. There are certain TTP. reasons, Faisal. You know, first I would talk about the report. I serve with UN and I know such reports are prepared very carefully after you know, testimonies and everything. It was not just Pakistan presented the case, then it was testified from other UN sources. Mm -hmm. And you know, there, there are several uh, resolution, UN resolution on uh, dealing of Taliban with their citizens, especially women and children. So these all reports are uh, submitted several times. But this report is very comprehensive report. It is. Which uh, uh, categorically uh, you know, defines everything which was not earlier on, on, on the front. For example, who is funding them, who is training them, and even, even the weapons which uh, American left, mm. they were trained uh, uh, on these weapons by the, the earlier of one national army, mm. which was raised by the American. Obviously. They were trained for these uh, weapons. Now, these TTP guys, uh, they are trained on that. That's why somehow there are two reasons. One is that uh, uh, Taliban, and uh, TTP, they are the ideological cousins mm. because uh, they think that uh, they fought with them and now they should, uh, you know, support them in their fight, what they think of their own uh, brand of Sharia. Mm. Secondly, my hunch is that and my study also uh, indicates uh, that uh, Taliban, the Afghan Taliban are somehow, you know, reluctant because uh, uh, they feel pressure of the TTP because TTP uh, because of the internal differences within the Afghan, Afghan cadre, TTP is supporting one ruling cadre hmm. hmm. and they are providing them shelter and support and security. So when they, the main, t main Taliban leadership is under the security of TTP, hmm. how come they can, uh, you know, 
react against them. Your point well taken, uh, very clearly. Uh, Abdullah Zab, uh, report also unveiled that regional Al-Qaeda operatives in Afghanistan uh, having long-term ties with Afghan uh, Taliban are sharing actually Afghan fighters and suicide attackers assisting TTP imparting training in conducting high-profile terrorist activities inside Pakistan. So how do you see that this angle particularly in the report? Uh, thank you uh, Faisal for having me in your show. Uh, let's see that what are the historic ties of TTP and Al-Qaeda. Although recently TTP has issued a statement denying its links with Al-Qaeda. But the, the fact is that Al-Qaeda had played a basic role in the formation of TTP early in uh, uh, 2007 when it was formally organized. But before that all the efforts were uh, behind that and those efforts were Al-Qaeda. And recently who is running their uh, media wing, the Umar media. These are the Al-Qaeda, but uh, Sahir people, Al uh, AQIS people, they are are running their uh, media. Al-Qaeda subcontinent. Is in the subcontinent. And, if, uh, and this is for last two years. If you see the content analysis of TTP during last two years, you will see a, a strategic shift. Previously, they used to, you know, only talk about uh, their attacks and, you know, something about FATA. But now, you will see that they will comment uh, each and every political development in Pakistan. Who is behind that? That is Al-Qaeda. And this is the Al-Qaeda's mind. All their propaganda and strategic approaches, they are being spearheaded by Al-Qaeda people. And their ties are well established and long standing as you have already said in your question. So this is very unfortunate that on one hand TTP says that... The report they, clearly yeah, says that there are training camps in Nangarhar, Kandahar, Kurnar and Nuristan. So these are the areas which were already volatile. Pakistan has already mentioned about that. The TTP existence with uh, along with Pakistan border is there at the Afghan soil. So uh, now uh, the UN report endorses it. Obviously, they are, you know, uh, you, uh, even if there was no UN report, everybody knows who are coming here. So no, uh, uh, tens of Afghans have been killed in Pakistan during this years who were involved in different attacks, not just the Banu as the Brigadier side, uh, has said. They are coming and they are joining. What is the problem uh, uh, as Shafqat Sath has highlighted with Afghan Taliban? They fear that if they will push uh, TTP, uh, they may join uh, Daesh. But we have seen that uh, they have dual policy. While dealing one uh, militant group like Daesh, they have a, you know, a certain policy while dealing with another, they have certain policy. And there is another unfortunate approach of Afghan Taliban. They have addressed concerns of Central Asian states. They have addressed concerns of China. They have addressed concerns of each and everybody. But they, ha they are reluctant to address the Pakistani concern. And that is so unfortunate that Pakistan has done a lot for them. Pakistan hosted OIC conference here. You know, Pakistan tried to advocate them at international level at every forum that uh, uh, pa pa Pakistan still advocates that the, uh, the, this interim Afghan government should be engaged mm. and the world is engaging with them and these are the, uh, this is the result of Pakistan's effort. What Pakistan is getting in back is very unfortunate that the, our a little concern of this security issue they, is not, they are not concerning. This is just a matter of decree of Mullah Haibatullah if he says that stop it and it will be stopped. But they are not stopping it. They are trying to use um, TTP as a bargaining chip. It is not just few things. They are trying to uh, use TTP as bargaining chip against Pakistan. Means of Ghan Interim yeah. Authority is uh, using TTP as its proxy uh, against to, uh, Pakistan. to have more leverage uh, uh, against Pakistan. It, uh, it, it is like that uh, basically uh, from look, You know, instead of realizing what Pakistan uh, has has been trying to convey to them they are on the one hand they are denying their presence on the other hand they are actively supporting and promoting and protecting them they are often we see some news that they are relocating but when uh, on the ground we see more attacks and the, this report as you has highlighted 600 or 5000 fight, fighters uh, I think this is less number. There are about 8,000 to 10,000 uh, active fighters are living in Afghanistan. And there are uh, hundreds of fighters are on this side who are every day you, you see. You know the United no. Nations reports actually is, uh, is, go, uh, go through several checks and verification mm -hmm. process. So uh, that's why might be they are a bit cautious. Yes, on the, but this, still uh, the overall uh, number is numbers high. But what <laughs> I, I want to say is that Afghan Taliban are actually damaging themselves because while you are supporting a group which is an in, internationally recognized terrorist group, 
and everybody now as the US uh, publicly said, the Pentagon yesterday they, they said, so you are protecting not TTB but, but Hafiz Gul Bahadur group is also there. You are actually damaging your own reputation. You had committed that Afghan soil will not be used against yes, other people. Yes, definitely into the but, Doha agreement yes. with the United States. So uh, Dr. Shafkat, uh, do you think that Afghan Taliban support Al-Qaeda's assistance, training and links with Daesh convert TTP into an extra regional threat and this greater collaboration might invite other terror, uh, terror outfits from other regions to join them, then it's going to be a great mess and a kind of a situation which was there in 1996. You know, terrorism is a business. It's not an isolated activity. It's not that uh, sometime you are doing business in one pocket and partly to other pocket. Business is a business and somebody is feeding it. Somebody's are the clients, somebody's are the, their, you know, uh, consumers. So we, in Pakistan's case, and with this report, it's very clear that against Pakistan, there is one big consumer of TTP, Daesh and other, that is India. They are supporting them because they have stake in Afghanistan. And Afghan authorities, internal authorities, they also think that since India is, you know, is a big country, India might uh, support them if, at international if uh, things happen otherwise because uh, otherwise is uh, china was a big supporter of taliban but there are reports that some of the uh, unannounced secret visits by the afghan interim authority people to delhi yeah. and the delhi that's people to kabul that's and they are uh, uh, to coming to and fro and have uh, the bunch of uh, dollars see, see, the that cash is, dollars that is my role when i was posted in afghanistan i was asked by the afghan uh, you know by the authorities that you should not show that you are a pakistani somebody ask you uh, if they will certainly say that you are Indian, you keep quiet. So these kind of apologetic attitude, and I am telling you the years back story, not the recent one. So that mindset still prevails in the Afghan, you know, the people, Afghan groups, and the interim government as well. Mm. I was talking about uh, uh, how you know these regional spread is there. See, um, SEO was expanded mm. from six to more, and. After expansion, the major agendas were um, on, uh, you know, anti-drugs and anti-terrorism. But the anti-terrorism bit was uh, lit later on was compromised because India, they had the summit there and, you know, they wanted that it should be only blamed <coughs> against Pakistan. You are talking about the rat spread form yeah, basically. Yeah, but that basically, was not much active. Yeah, right? not much active. And the blame was a uh, shift to Pakistan. Whereas Pakistan is victim of terrorism. Mm. Now Pakistan has to see a couple of things after this UN report. One is that uh, uh, Pakistan has to play internationally now. Mm. To take this report, telling that this, this is a, this spread is going soon, sooner or later. It's not just Pakistan because when the business will be down here, certainly there are already reports that uh, uh, IS uh, subcontinent they are shifting people to the bordering states, mm -hmm. which are Central definitely, Asia and others. And, yes. and, and we know there was a Moscow threat and everything is there. So when, and, and Taliban are not, uh, you know, homogeneous kind of a structure. Mm. They have different kind of interest groups. Yes. They have different uh, groups fighting for different interests. Similarly, some have links with Al-Qaeda, some deny that. But ultimately, Al-Qaeda is the back supporter to them because they generate money from outside mm. differently in, in for this uh, terrorism business. Afghanistan is a safe hub for everyone, all the terrorist group as you know Brigadi Sahib also mentioned, not only Taliban or religious group, but there are ethnic groups as well yeah, stationed there. Definitely. So with the security point of view, Afghanistan is a safe haven for all these groups. Unfortunately. And they are doing business, somebody is uh, paying or uh, consuming their business things. So now we in Pakistan after this report should take this matter up at the UN Security uh, Certainly the report is already submitted to, to the UN, submitted Security, to the UN Council, Security Council. Yes. Then there is a debate. Pakistan should do a strong lobby through the partners, through our uh, friends, including Saudi Arabia, including China and other. And now Americans are also uh, would not be opposing. Yeah, definitely. You well. are absolutely So right. we should uh, right. go for a full-fledged uh, diplomatic uh, offensive. 
so that we could uh, generate a pressure on them. Oh, that we should. Uh, put we on will. The, we will uh, again come to this point, uh, Abdullah sir. What your thought on consist consistent supply of uh, NATO caliber weapons, uh, uh, along with leftover weapons by the U.S. forces, especially night vision capability that have been provided to TTP since uh, the Taliban takeover added lethality to, to the TP TTP terrorist attacks on Pakistan, particularly because we have witnessed these uh, uh, during the recent years recent months particularly? Uh, look, the wars uh, generally, you know, uh, transfer weapons and technologies. Uh, we have seen in 80s when uh, there was no Klasenkov before Afghan war uh, against the Soviet Union. And then everywhere we, we saw the Klasenkov was, uh, you know, not just in Pakistan, but rest of the world we have seen the guerrilla warfare. Now we see the M16, the American rifle is replacing gradually the Klasnikov. This is the outcome of uh, a long American presence in Afghanistan. And their uh, leftover, you know, hundreds of thousands of weapons uh, unaccounted for, you know, and weapon caches and huge uh, weapons are now available in the black market. And uh, we came to a report just uh, after the fall of Kabul that uh, T TTP had purchased billions of dollars of weapons mm. at that time from northern uh, Afghanistan, from certain uh, Taliban commanders. Uh, who paid for them? This is another question. So this is obvious ou ou outcome. Now Pakistan has asked the U uh, U.S. that uh, it should provide Pakistan the small weapons and other other things. I think uh, one thing Pakistan should be very careful uh, that we should have least American or outside signatures in this war. Mm. Otherwise, the TTP or these militants will play it into their propaganda. Just like the Pentagon spokesperson statement yes. came in, coming yesterday, they, that was not in our favor because TTP will use it in, in propaganda that this is not Pakistan's war, this is not American war. We are fighting against America and America is supporting Pakistan, so it, it will damage Pakistan's narrative. So we will, we should be very careful in our approach because they recruit mostly the Pakistani youth, although the Afghans are there, but these are all not Afghans. Majority are the Pakistani people, Pakistani youth recruited by TTP for certain pretexts, misguiding them. So we have to protect our youth as well in our approach. Definitely, you are absolutely right. So, uh, Dr. Shafka, uh, pertaining to the Afghan Taliban's concern, as you were mentioning as well, uh, to uh, have excessive pressure on TTP, uh, they think that they might lead them to co uh, collaborate openly with Daesh. Reportedly, uh, some of the TTP elements in the Afghan Taliban also claim that during certain operations, uh, they actually pushed Daesh elements uh, towards Pakistan, Iran, and Central Asian republics. So, uh, there are now the two. Uh, uh, concerns. One is that uh, uh, some of the elements pushed into the neighboring countries and one is uh, by the th Afghan interim authority that they might, those Taliban might go towards Daesh. So they don't want it uh, that they uh, get into the lap of uh, Daesh rather than to be. So that's why they are using them, their asset. I think uh, to a certain extent this seems to be a ploy in the sense that uh, they are using Daesh as a shield, whereas they themselves want to protect the Taliban, the TTP mm. inside. Because as I earlier told that there are uh, conflicting situations within the, the interim leadership mm. on various issues. And the uh, security and protection issues of the main leadership is in the hands of TTP. So uh, to hoodwink uh, the word, maybe they are using um, the uh, scapegoat uh, kind of a preposition on uh, Daesh. Certainly, there might be some reason behind it. Uh, I am not denying that uh, Daesh is not operating. Uh, part of the whole game, they are already existing there mm. in Afghanistan. And there is no doubt that they are pilferaging in, uh, across uh, other region, regional states as well. There are complaints uh, from Central Asia. And even Iran has uh, some sort of reservations. Yes, definitely. They are there, but uh, actually on TTP, uh, Pakistan should not uh, ex uh, accept the lame excuse of the interim government mm. after this report, the UN report, which is very clear. Very that, clear. That, uh, no doubt. There, there is no doubt that uh, clarifies what is the relation between the IS uh, subcontinent and mm. Taliban, mm. TTP, all the three, nexus between the three 
or everything is clear there. No doubt. Now, now Pakistan has uh, to take offensive at two two levels. One is as suggested diplomatically. Secondly, Pakistan should uh, uh, start thinking of uh, use of force mm -hmm. because now there is a time coming up. Uh, uh, Pakistan has already exhausted various options of uh, negotiation, reconciliation, or you know, um, uh, third party involvement. China was there, dialogues were in Moscow, in China, in other countries, other uh, people, you know, at, at Doha, various levels of talks were there. Pakistan uh, has ex exhausted all these uh, elements of, you know, in the process of peace building. And then finally, now uh, use of force would be an option. Maybe not now in the, at the moment. At the moment, again, there is an open door for the diplomacy. Definitely. So diplomacy you doesn't right, work, but, uh, then we uh, have to go In that down. case as the well, action. because Pakistan is uh, abiding by the UN Charter and uh, the international law. and all, So there are lots of sovereignty issues and all other things. Uh, Pakistan respects the sovereignty of every country, including Afghanistan. That's why Pakistan is stressing time and again on Afghan uh, interim authority to take decisive action. But if Pakistan territory would be attacked, then certainly Pakistan, obviously, has, obviously the right Pakistan has the right to respond defend. on that. Definitely. Abdullah Khan said, uh, a UN report categorically stated that Afghanistan became permissive heaven for anti-China uh, East Turkestan Islamic movement group, uh, Al-Qaeda, uh, Daesh and uh, tariq taliban threatening Iran, Central Asia and Pakistan. And this required well-coordinated response from neighboring countries. So we are already discussing that most of the neighboring countries are mum at this situation. Uh, uh, Faisal, uh, actually uh, this report is issued every six months yes. and since Taliban came into power, this was in all the reports that uh, different militant groups are there in Afghanistan and they, they are regional, international, like Al-Qaeda is international. There, there were several IM. reports came, but uh, well. this particular UN report is has a severity yeah. in nature. That is very uh, unique, that is very important and uh, uh, this must have to be addressed by the regional countries because otherwise you know that uh, it's going to be a mess for all. Uh, look, uh, in Afghanistan there are three types of groups. One is uh, those are allied to uh, Afghan Taliban, like Al-Qaeda, IMU. Uh, IMU had merged into Daesh, but there are Imam Bukhari Brigade and uh, Ansarullah, which is yes, the Tajik yes, group, yes. ETIM. These mm. all groups mm. are actually allied with Taliban. The others are anti-Taliban. Anti-Taliban are uh, Daesh is the, the most prominent group. Then NRF is there, then AF, uh, Afghan Freedom uh, Front, AFF. And then there are neutral groups who, who are not fighting in Afghanistan but using Afghan soil to fight elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And these groups include BLA, BLF, and they, they are they also have their sanctuaries in Afghanistan. Recently, government of Balochistan had publicly, uh, you know, claimed that they are also being protected mm -hmm. by the Afghan authorities. So uh, these three groups, uh, three ty different types of group, are using Afghan soil. Uh, th there is a need to engage Afghan Taliban, the uh, interim government that this is against uh, the international norms. If you want to become part of international community, then you will have to address this. And as I said earlier, that they have generally addressed the concerns of all others mm. except the Pakistan, mm. which is protecting more than 3 million Afghans, mm. which is, you know, doing its best to engage with them, Obviously. pushing international community. But having said this, I would still insist that the Pakistan should, should keep engaging with them. Pakistan should, you know, have a broader, uh, you know, framework of engaging uh, interim Afghan uh, government. We should not link each and everything with Obviously, this, very this important TTP point. issue. Very important point. So, uh, uh, Dr. Shafkas, if you uh, must have to be very brief because we have run short of time, uh, why not uh, neighboring countries get united at the issue of counter-terrorism? We are talking a lot, but we are not doing enough. So. Uh, uh, start a diplomatic campaign to pressurize Afghan Taliban to take decisive action against the terror outfits, don't supply uh, arms and put uh, 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 at least uh, the pressure on those countries as well as you were mentioning about India uh, who are sponsoring TTP like terror outfits uh, in Afghanistan. So how do you respond to this one? I think all the regional countries have signed the agreement at SCO that uh, they would not allow any activity terrorist activity in the region, they will protect the region from extremism, terrorism, mm. from drug abuse and all these. They have already agreed. Secondly, or particularly on the, on the TTP and other areas, and Taliban particularly, 
within Afghanistan and Pakistani uh, Taliban, those who are attacking from uh, using the Afghan soil, they have all committed under, under the Doha agreements. Mm. So uh, they, they have also agreed uh, that they will not allow uh, Afghan soil to be used against any regional countries. Agreements are there. Only thing is that action. Mm. Well, now the action is an issue. Mm. Who will take the action? As an uh, b better is that uh, first uh, we should regionally reconvene the SCO, particularly China, Russia and others should take a lead on that. Central Asia should take a lead on that. And of course, Pakistan, India and other players, they should uh, take a lead. And at the SEO level, they should decide that now the words cannot work. They, they have to come to the deeds and action. Definitely. But they have to act now. If they will not act now, then the situation will further, you know, uh, the spread would be much, uh, you know, uh, bigger than we expect. Obviously, so the, we obviously. should uh, regionally right. take an action on that. Mm. So action is possible because... Action is already drawn in the documents. Mm. Only thing is that who will take they the have to take There should be a joint, joint committee. There should be a joint action group who will take the action. Now there is a time to act. Not only just again a, an agreement. All agreements are there. Obviously. So Abdullah Khan said Taliban Interim Authority has not been formally recognized as a legitimate government uh, by the international community. So do you think that... Uh, uh, with such an attitude uh, they have in Kabul, they are creating a worse kind of situation uh, for themselves or for entire Afghan population uh, to uh, suffer in future. As I have said earlier that, uh, you know, let me repeat that Pakistan has very, uh, you know, strong shock observer. We can, we have fought them, these militant groups, and we can fight and we can win. But the Afghan the f uh, government is very fragile. They need to understand that this is for their own sake, that they should not allow these groups to stay there. They should have a proper you know, uh, policy for them, although they fought al uh, alongside them. So they cannot you know, take uh, actions against them, but they will have to do something to uh, address the international concerns. These <coughs> concerns are not just Pakistan's concern. America has sh uh, expressed concern. China, Chinese are being attacked. Russia is, uh, you know, uh, being affected. Obviously. So, as you said, so th this is the problem is the, the Afghan government wants to be, uh, become the member of international community. They will have to address this is a big issue. And every time UN Security Council, every six months, they are telling them that this is the problem in you and you have to address them. Although international community doesn't have any other option rather than engaging with them. Mm. But for how long? This is the responsibility of uh, interim Afghan government to address these concerns. <coughs> uh, uh, other, uh, otherwise, they will have to face consequences and that can uh, uh, result in, you know, pushing Afghanistan into another cycle of violence. And this will be, as you highlighted, the Afghan population will suffer. They has to do something for their own people. Other than Pakistan, what Pakistan is saying, it's Pakistan interest as well as it's Definitely. the people of Afghanistan. You are absolutely us. right. Absolutely right. Thank you very much, Abdullah Khan sahab, uh, for your presence in the studios. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Shafkat Munir sahab, for your time in the studios. Uh, uh, viewers, as uh, you have just listened to our uh, panelists, it is important that uh, this UN report, which is comprehensive 15th report of analytical support and sanctions monitoring team, which was already submitted to the UN uh, Security Council, is a very important important document. Uh, it tells us the severity of uh, the terrorism in the region, particularly how TTP in alliance with Al-Qaeda and in support uh, of uh, Afghan interim authority is uh, uh, turning out to be a monster in the region. So uh, this monster must have to be dealt with. So uh, uh, Shanghai uh, Cooperation Organization can take a decisive action against this because it's a regional uh, organization. The Central Asian Republics, China, Russia, uh, uh, all have the concerns, but ha they have to take uh, stern action against these terrorist organizations. Uh, it is not only the Pakistan's duty, but Pakistan is the most sufferer of terrorism. So Pakistan has to take decisive action against all those elements. Uh, Pakistan has to pressure ag aggressively uh, uh, with the diplomacy across the world with this particular UN report. Pakistan has to raise this issue of lethal weapons uh, uh, going in the hands of terrorists and uh, for the terrorist activities they are using it. Uh, we have to protect our youth particularly 
actually uh, from falling into the wrong hands, particularly the terrorists. And uh, Pakistan must think of use of force if necessary because the attacks are straight away coming from Afghan soil to Pakistan. And uh, uh, this is uh, inflicting a lot of pain, uh, not only to, to the civilians, but also to the security forces and law enforcement agencies as we have witnessed in Bannu and D.I. Khan. So uh, this is necessary that we have to protect our borders at any cost. So this is today's foresight. It's time to sign off. Allah Hafiz al